Good morning and welcome to our morning manna. This is Pastor Diane Winbush as your host on today. Um, we thank you for joining us this Tuesday morning. Um, and we just thank you uh, for uh, being with us. And it's a blessing to be in the land of the living. It's a blessing to be uh, alive. Some of the things that we take for granted, we overlook it. And we're just thankful for our sight, for the activities of our limbs, for the breath of life, for um, hearing, for um, legs to walk, hands to be able to use and praise and praise God, work and whatever um, that our hands are set forth to do. We're just so thankful this morning uh, for uh, having small necessities that came with us from days of old, but we're still able to operate them um, on today. And uh, we're just grateful for that. Um, and so we're gonna get into um, our little prayer. Um, and that's, and, and let me explain to you about prayer. Prayer does not always consist of us being on our knees. It does not always consist of us closing our eyes. That's a formula or a format that we use. Jesus Christ even used those formulas. He's used those formats of them bowing down, of closing his eyes. He used them as well. But we, um, have also additional resources that we can be able to use. We can pray just like what we're doing now, speaking the prayer out. Um, and God still will honor that. He still will honor that. So I just wanted to explain it, you know, because how the Holy Spirit had gave it to me some years ago. What if the person is in a wheelchair? They can't bend their knees. Will I disregard their prayer? What if the person uh, don't have legs? to bend and bow, will I uh, disregard their prayer? What if a person cannot talk? See, because a person can think in their mind. You know, the scripture teaches us that in the book of Proverbs. So if a man thinketh, so is he. So he may not, or she may not be able to verbally communicate, but they can be able to communicate to God uh, in their mindset, okay? So they're different. I, well, I was just thinking about that this morning. There's one God. He changed not, but he has many methods, many methods. So um, when the Holy Spirit opened that up to my understanding, here some years ago, I think we were on a fast on the job when I was working and back in the early 2000s and the ministry at that time that we were connected with or affiliated with, we were on a fast. Uh, for that day. And of course, you know, I couldn't just go in there and tell the job I'm on the fast. So let me fast for from six o'clock this morning to one o'clock on my knees fasting and praying or going about my day. I had to, you know, learn through the Holy Spirit of how to um, learn God's methods. Okay. So there is one God. He changed not but he has many methods as to how we do things, okay? So we wanna uh, continue to be able uh, to use our, um, our authority in heaven and on earth to be able to pray for, uh, continue to pray for the Ukrainians. Um, I'm, I'm not for sure if the war is even getting better or it, if it's getting worse, it appears that the president is just continues to try to make a um, declaration or a message, send a message to the Ukrainians, um, the, the president of Russia. So we have to be continue to pray. We have to continue to pray. We have to continue to pray, pray, pray. And of course, we have learned the news that they are predicting um, almost 100,000 or 100 million people to have COVID-19 by the end of 2021. And we have to be in prayer. Um, I can't advise anyone to go get a shot, but um, if you don't, um, uh, you know, have, you don't feel comfortable in getting the, the vaccine, talk to God, ask God to cover you, cover you and your family, okay? Ask God to cover your family. You know, everybody has their own different beliefs. Everybody has their own different um, opinions as to what they want the government to give them. 
Some people don't like to be controlled by the government. And so some people feel that this is an act of control. And that's the reason why um, the government has backed off of uh, putting, I guess, the nation on a second lockdown. But if 100 million are predicted for uh, this uh, pandemic, um, it's another lockdown is coming. Okay, just like they're doing in, in China. China has less authority than the United States. That's the reason why everybody run to the or come to the United States. It's the land of the free, home of the brave. And so our policies of government is different than certain other countries. And so China, what they're doing is they have built um, uh, metal fences around the apartments in that country to prohibit the people from leaving the house so that the coronavirus um, cease to spread. They're locking them in. Just think about what type of situation we would be under if we was under something like that. We ought to be thanking God every day, even though we complain, we whine, we'd be up under a lot of pressure. I'm serious, all of us do it. We need to be thanking God every day that we are not a socialism, communism type of country where um, we are mandated and made to um, live up under some certain types of conditions like that. They actually got bars, fence bars, just like when they have a protest set up or what have you. They have these things actually set up in front of these people's doors to prevent them from coming out of the house. Now, is that ridiculous? Well, I can't, I, I mean, that's their policies and law. So we can't say that. That's what they have always been governed by. They are governed by how many children they can have in China and what have you. So that's what a communist and um, socialism country does. They take control. They tell them what to eat. They tell them just like in, the, in Daniel chapter one, they tell them what to do. They, you know, they control them. Dictatorship. And so um, we have to be in prayer that this coronavirus is contained. Is it going to completely go away? No. Um, I do feel that God is going to allow it to stay. Okay, it's a plague, y'all. Okay, it's a plague. He's going to let it stay. It's not going anywhere. Okay, not for many, many, many days. It's not going anywhere because we have become disobedient. Uh, we are not uh, as a sweet smelling savior unto God. You know, where the children of Israel had to go in there and bake and cook and all kind of things and offer a sacrifice up to God. And if it smelled good, God received them. And if the sacrifice was done with the right intention and with the right heart and in purity, God received those people. Okay. And we're right now, we're not on that level. We're, we're, we're far from it. And that's the reason why we continue to see fires in states where, you know, devastation is going on like you know we've never heard of a fire in nebraska we always hear of a fire in um places like california arizona but now we're hearing them hearing about fires in states uh that have like a kind of moderate climate okay got blizzards going on in the month of april 18 feet of snow now who can live up under something like that Okay, we have to be in prayer. God is not pleased. He's not satisfied. Come on. Let's have to be honest. The church folk too. Okay, because I mean, you know, we, we pray less in the church. And we talk more against one another, you know, in the public or, you know, we have different tools that we have and methods and we beat people up with it. And um, we are, 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 you know, and I was talking to God just uh, last week. I said, Lord, do not allow the righteous to suffer with the unjust. Okay? With the unjust, well, it don't matter who you are. Pastor, preacher, elder, bishop, 
that's unjust. You got to get yourself back in line. All of us do. We got to get back in line. These things are not happening for nothing. They're happening for a reason, for a cause, for a purpose. Okay. Back in the day, we used to hear mudslides in India, uh, in uh, um, India, Indonesia, those type of Turkey. We heard about mudslides. Now the United States got mudslides. The third world countries, catastrophic means have now entered our country. We're now seeing devastation, okay? We have lost over 700,000 people to the coronavirus just in the United States alone. We have lost the most people. Now you tell me God is not talking to the United States. You tell me that he's not, okay? We've got this thing that's going on with the uh, Roe versus Wade. We need to be praying. Everybody has their own opinions about abortions. I do understand the need for, you know, people feel that if I've been raped by my family member, if I've been raped by somebody I don't know, if I have raped that, I mean, you know, I don't know, but I know that we do not supposed to be killing babies. I do know that but I don't know what the person is going through or what they're feeling on the inside, wanting to remove something that is just abomination to them. So I don't know how God would see that. And I'm not here to judge. And that's the reason why I'm going to leave that up to the person. But if it's something like you, a person that's uh, getting pregnant and you say, oh, this is a mistake. No, I don't feel that that woman has the right. You need to take some kind of type, so, some sort of contraceptive if you feel that you don't want to be able to conceive a child. We know God is against abortion. We know God is against uh, um, conceiving from having children, he said, be fruitful and multiply. But I'm saying sin is so um, abundant on the earth. Um, we have to make, I guess, uh, the better choices. We have to give up. We have to ask the Lord. We have to talk to him. We have to ask God. And we know that there are a lot of people that are making a lot of decisions that are not spiritual. They're not Christians or anything like that. So maybe Christians. We don't know, but what we do, we have to pray for these women. We have to pray for them. Baba she, because I know that they got to be going through something too. If they have birthed a child through incest, because that's going on in, in, in the United States, like it's not like it's nothing. It's going on. You have different areas in the United States. Where, ir where incest is prevalent, like the state of Mississippi, okay, Louisiana, okay, New Orleans, okay? We have to be in prayer. God will destroy us. And that's the reason why we have to be careful, y'all. Have to be careful. Think about what you're doing, okay? And we have to pray for those women. I, you know, my, I, I can't, I know what the scripture says. I know what the law says. I know what the word of God says. But my heart still is, it, 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 it aches for the women that have to make a choice like that. When they have been raped, they'll tell you. They, it's on the television. I'm not sitting here making it up. They'll tell you that, that you know, if, it's, if the child is, is born out of incest, so that means incest is going on in the United States. I didn't find it, you know, and the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you too. Okay. Um, we just have to, we, we, it does. My heart aches for these women. Um, that have to make a decision like that. They may not want to, but because of incest, rape, someone is, um, touch them inappropriately, you know, my heart aches for them. It does. It really does because they're in a position that, that they don't want to be in. But as I stated, if you're just doing something and you're trying to take a child's life because you use unprotected sex and things like that, I, I don't have sympathy for that woman. I don't because we have to use some sort of contraceptive 
before we decide to do anything. You know, we have to use the right judgment. And so we're praying for all of the women that feel in these abortion clinics. You know, we have to pray for these people. Now they're sending out pills. They got pills that make you like to make you kill them. Okay. I'm, I'm serious. God is angry. His wrath is coming out. Okay. Full force. Okay. And we have to use uh, wise judgment. And the judgment is we have to pray. And we have to think about our actions. I did. I, 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 I went to God. I said, please do not allow the righteous to be punished with the wicked or with the unjust because everybody is not at fault for this, okay? Um, we do know that um, the, the pair that, uh, that was on the run where the prisoner, uh, you know, not gonna call his name out, but the prisoner where he had, he had escaped in the state of Alabama um, and with a correctional officer, we know that he has been captured. And also, not only has he, has he been captured, um, the correctional officer self-inflicted herself and she has passed away. We are in prayer for them. We have to still pray for people, even if they make unwise decisions, we have to pray for them. Okay, my heart still aches for her, even though she did the wrong thing, we still have to pray. We pray for her family, the family of, of uh, correctional officer Vicki White, Okay, we pray for her. We pray for the family. Okay, that there will be peace. God will calm their mourning because it's a it's a it's a um, unfortunate way to pass away. Okay, it's very very unfortunate. So we want to be in prayer uh, for that family, and be in prayer for uh, our pastors, our leaders, our our bishops, our apostles that hold up the bloodstained banner every day. We pray for them, teachers, ushers, parking lot attendants, okay, cafeteria workers that's in the church, in the schools. We pray for them. Come on here. Pray for the children, for the bullying. Now bullying is rising up again. And um, we pray for, you know, the counselors in the schools that they will be able to aid the children when the children come to them and complain about um, other students that are offending them. I know we can't fix everything in regards to a child's complaint, but some things can be resolved if we just take the time. And sometimes a counselor can be um, engulfed with so much work to do, he or she may miss it. So we want to be in prayer, okay? I want to be in prayer, asking the Lord that he will bring constructive tools in the school education system to be able to help these children that are going through to prevent them from suicide, cutting themselves, things like that, okay? We're learning something, right? Because we know that once we intercess in prayer, that the prayer is not about us. And we have to ask God to help us to keep our focus off of us. The focus got to, we're, we're, we're a walking epistle for somebody else. Just think about that now. You're not a walking epistle for your church or your ministry, but you're a walking epistle for others. That's the reason why God sometimes will not move in a situation because he tries to move us out of self just went, uh, you know, just experienced something like that the other day until you get back in line and do it the way I want you to do it. I'm, I'm not going to budge. And I got up yesterday. And after the Holy Spirit spoke to me again, see, because we, we take these scriptures and we think these scriptures are from, you know, back, you know, when, when the end times or, you know, in the millennium or at the end of the world and stuff. That's not what that's for, okay? I went straight to the scripture. I'll tell the truth on me. When he took me straight to the scripture. The day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. For years, when, you know, it depends on how a leader ministers that scripture. For years, I always thought that that scripture was about 
God's voice coming back in the clouds and rapturing his people. That's not what he's talking about. That's talking about whenever he's speaking to you, whether it's through another person, whether it's through a sermon, whether it's through someone else's ministry, or whether he's speaking through you through scripture, don't harden your heart up like Lord. Listen to what he is saying. Okay. And he told me that, and I was going through that scripture yesterday, and I think I bumped into it last week, and I did the week before that, I did. And I'm like, and it fell on me again yesterday. The day that you hear my voice, hard not your heart. I say, okay, then boom, I got it, Holy Spirit. And that's when everything else began to be unlocked. Obedience will touch the hem of his garment. Obedience in God will touch the heart of God. You out of court, you can have all the speaking in tongue. The Bible said that's going to cease. You can have all the prophecy. The Bible said that's going to fold up too. It's going to fold up not at the end times. It's going to fold up now. Okay. But the obedience and the love are the two key components to God's heart. When you love others, I'm not talking about your sister, your daddy, your household. You know, I was talking to a person. They was telling me that somehow, oh, uh, well, the 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 uh the uh the charity uh starts at home first then at abroad but and after the person made that statement you never did see them show any love anywhere else sometimes people knows how to take these scriptures and they know how to uh uh, uh distort it distort means to use it for your own personal gain you'll do away with it of the actual meaning of what it means and you'll come in and bring your own interpretation of it and that's what she did she distorted it i'm like you don't help nobody so when sit down you don't help nobody okay so once uh and i was so happy just as free as a lark yesterday okay so i need you to get up and i need you to feed my sheep take care of the poor do what you're supposed to do and i'm and i'm gonna say this lord please help me if god has given you an a, especially when a ministry is in a particular location if it's in a particular location if it's in a particular, God has you in a particular location, or you have a building ministry where you do outreach and it's a, in a particular location, you got to work that location. That's what he was telling me yesterday. He was getting on to me about it. I didn't want to do it the week before. I'm tired of doing it. I'm tired. You know, you can't tell God that you're tired. We can't tell God no stuff like that. Okay? You got to work your location. Okay, we got to work it. Keep working it. God put, especially if he put you in a community, how is it that God put us in a community, our church and our ministry and our building, our outreach ministry, our event planning in a certain uh, community and we don't talk to the people? You, say, you saying that they don't believe in God or they don't go to church, that's not no excuse. That's because you're not praying for them. You're not praying enough for them. You went in with the wrong motives. See, because we was taught how to do, to, to, to do outreach ministry, which was wrong. I'm, I'm telling you, that's the reason why you got to stay in the presence of God, stay in his face so you can know how to do outreach ministry. Back in the day, people were doing outreach ministry by going in, knocking on their door, sitting down, doing an interview with, with the people and stuff with a book, asking them, do they go to church? Are they saved when the last time they got? That's not none of your business. That is a privacy. Uh, policy. You don't have any right to do that. And so back then the people didn't know any better because they went by whatever their leader taught them, but that was wrong. And I'm going to show you. So I had an opportunity to serve in many capacities before I even became a uh, pastor. And so, um, and I didn't even want this pastor role. Let's, let's go ahead on and put that out there too. I didn't want this. And um, The first year, I think, when I was a chaplain at this hospital working as a volunteer, and, and sometimes the people, would, when I would open up the door and I was like, my name is so-and-so, because -so -so, see, I was going by how 
you know, religion had taught me, you know, my name is so-and-so, so-and-so. I want to know if you want prayer, you know, throwing scriptures at them and stuff like that. And some of them people would sit there, their face would turn just as red. And then some people would sit there, they would be astonished. They would be, you know, you could tell it on their face, don't come back to my room no more. And that went on for a whole year. Okay, because I was caught up in how religion had taught me how to do it, you know. And so when the next year came around, everybody was making their New Year's resolutions and stuff. You know, I want to be a better person. I want to lose weight. I want to be exercise more. I want to save money. I want to get a hold of my bank account and stuff. I went in there and I asked God, I said, Lord, show me a different method. I keep telling you over and over and over, it's one God. He changed not, but he used many methods. I said, this ain't working. I said, why do these people stay? He said, because you're going to them the wrong way. I never taught you to go that way. Go in, knock on the door, introduce yourself, and tell them if it tell them, because everybody, everybody know what a chaplain is. Everybody know what a chaplain is for. Some of the people thought that I was coming to coming to uh, pray for them because they was uh, they thought they were dying. Yes, they did too. They thought they was dying because I went in with the wrong method. It wasn't God's way of going in there, reading scripture to them, speaking in tongues, all of that kind of hoo-ha. Okay? And once I went in there and went in with God's method and he gave it to me. See, because sometimes God, ain't, God is not going to say anything. He gives us a choice, just like he did from the beginning. He gives us a choice. I'm going to see how long she's going to sit here and, and, and wait to come to me and get my plan as to how she need to run her, her, her role as a uh, servant or as a leader in that hospital. Okay? It took me a year to figure it out, to go to God and ask him. And when I went in there and I asked him and he gave me how to do it, good morning, my name is Pastor, or I don't even think I said Pastor. Good morning, my name is Diane Winbush. I'm the chaplain here at the hospital for this week. If you need anything, just let me know. And I left. And when I did it that way, because when uh, in certain hospitals, certain hospitals have certain uh, instructions, permissions, and so at the hospital that I worked at, you had the authority to um, go in and, and be with the family, even while they're resuscitating them back in the emergency room, in the morgue, wherever. We, you know, we had authority to go all over that hospital. And, um, and I took God's route. And after that, and, and then too, like I said, once you once you volunteered to be a chaplain for that week, we would sign up which week with that we wanted of the month. We was on call just like an undertaker that whole week, day or night. And so I got a call one night and um, the guy, he was, I think he was going through something. I think it was his third episode of going through the same issue. And um he, um, he he wanted a chaplain to talk to. And so uh, I had to get up and I had to go out there, put my clothes on and be professional and went out there and talked to him and things. And um, the doors started to open it up and the people started asking for prayer once I went in and did it God's way, okay? So that's the reason why we have to, you know, the, the, the scripture says, you don't know, put old wine into new bottles for the bottle will burst so we have to you know generations change years change decades change centuries change things change and god is included in the change he's the same god one god but he used many methods different different decades different dimensions different uh uh centuries okay 
Just because he have not shared it with you don't mean it didn't, it didn't come from God. That is a very, very high prideful individual where he or she feels that if God didn't, didn't show them a certain revelation, then it must didn't come from God. Denominations are, are critical about that. You know, God ain't never showed us nothing like that in the scripture, because when you feel that way, that means that your mindset is so high. Now you sitting on the platform with God, and that's what messed Satan up. That's what messed him up, okay? Also messed up Nebuchadnezzar, messed him up. High-minded, highly opinionated. I done been there before, too, until I had to go in there and cry out to God. And ask God to help me with my opinions because I was listening to something uh, recently and the person was very highly opinionated and I began to pray because I, I've been there before. And just like I said, we have a choice. We all have a choice. And so when God reveals a certain thing to us, he wants us to take authority over it. All the time, a person may not come to you and prophesy about what's in you. And plus, you shouldn't want nobody to prophesy about you all the time. You should have a relationship enough that is good enough with God where you can go in to the throne and behind the veil whenever you get ready. Okay? So don't ever be that high-minded where if God didn't give you the ruler, it seemed like if it was from God, he would, he would have told me too. Well, he telling you now. Okay, God speaks through, through people too. It's a lot of things that I don't know. I'm willing to learn and we're gonna be taught entirely until Christ comes back. Because if we think that the teaching is over with, then there's no need for no savior. That's the reason why he came. He just didn't come just to die for the sins of the world. Are you crazy? <laughs> he came as a guide. He came to, he has already fulfilled the fivefold ministry. He continues to help us if we'll allow him to. See, a lot of times we don't evicted God out of a lot of things, out of our ministry, marriage, bedroom, family, uh, work, business, church, neighborhood, everything, grocery store, grocery prices. Okay, and I know where this one particular uh, denomination got this thing from where you take your bills and you got a lot of bills, you take it and you lay it, go and lay it before God and stuff like that. That's in the Bible. That's what Hezekiah done. I had just saw that back here about a couple of months ago. And that's where some of the, the, the pioneer saints had got this. So everything that they have taught, I'm not saying that it was wrong. Okay, I'm just saying some things that was taught of old, they just need a little tweaking and we have to go by doing it a different way. But that's what Hezekiah did. When he received that letter from the king, the Bible said he went and took that letter and he laid it, laid the letter, got up there in his room and stuff and laid it before God, okay? And we can do the same thing too. But like I say, everybody, God can different people, different methods. Just think about what, what life would be about if all of us did the same thing. We would be robotic. Okay? Say it one more time so you can understand me what I'm saying. He's one God. He changed not, but he used many methods. He's universal. God has more than one key to unlock a door. He has more than one sentence of a phrase to, to get you delivered. He has more than one uh, option so that you can become free or so that I can become free or so that we can become free. It's different. And that's how people stop growing. They get stuck. They, they look, turn around and look at other people. Dog, they done shot up, shot up the ladder and stuff. No, it's just you just behind. You behind. Nobody ain't shot up no ladder. You just behind. God doesn't move. God continues to continues to move the person because they have humbled themselves, and you decide to stay in the background. Okay, so we have to be in prayer, y'all. Be in prayer for yourself. Don't be pointing your finger at nobody else. I'm telling you, them opinions gonna get you in trouble. And I'm so thankful that He allowed me to see me. 
so I can go in there and work on that situation, lay it at his feet. Well, I still got this problem, even though I lay it at Jesus' feet. Then you have to go in there with some more reinforcement. You may have to fast some more. You may have to pray some more until it's all gone. You Don't you think that you're going to get in heaven and slide in there, in there and stuff like that? The Bible said you're a thief if you do, and which you will not be able to. You have to come in at the front door. And so when we come in at the front door, that means we do it the right way. Okay? God ain't going to let us in now. There's no any kind of way. So these things, and, 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 and once he deals with you with it, you got to take authority over it. Because if you don't, the enemy is standing right there looking at it too. The Bible says he had, that the Bible teaches us that he was wiser than Daniel. And we know Daniel was wise. Solomon was wise. But the Bible says that Satan, it's in, it's in there, I think it's Isaiah uh, 14. He was wiser than Daniel. So he's standing right there looking at it. He's looking at your faults. And he's going to sit there and continue to work on that situation. Beat you up. Hit you across the head. Knock you around. Beat you around. Until you come to the reality of I need to work on this. Because it's going to get worse. I done been through that so many times. If I, I better take, take captivity over this thing right now because if I don't, the next two weeks is going to be done pro progressed on the inside. You have to take authority over you. Come on out of here. Ah, da da ba she. You got to take authority over you. Okay? And so, like I said, when God gives you an assignment, for your territory, you work your territory. And he, and even while I was doing the things that I needed to do for, for my assignment, for my people in this particular location, he said, get, get on back over there. I just got so happy because anytime we do something for God, it ought to be joy on the inside. If we upset and mad about it, then God won't get the glory for it. And you won't get nothing. out. You won't get anything out of it if you got an attitude. Because see, that's, that's the enemy's job is to make us, to frustrate us, to wear us out. Come on here, Daniel chapter eight, to wear out the saints. So you get tired, you get tired of running, you get tired of working, you get tired of moving for God. He said, get back over there. They're your people. I assign these people to you. Get back over there where they at. They're in need. Get back over there and do what I told you to do. The enemy is the one that comes in to bring disruption Corruption, that's his job. Okay, that's his job. And that's your job and my job and our job is to work the will of the Father. And once I went in there and, he, and the Holy Spirit came in and brought a serenity up on me yesterday while I was going in there, getting the things that I need for my people that where God assigned me to, that's the reason why people are not getting saved anymore because we're lazy. That's the reason why the people are not getting set free. That's the reason why they can't see the love of God because we're all stuck up in these churches and we don't follow the word. The, the scriptures that get in the hedges and highways and compel my people. We're not doing what we're supposed to do. Now, he may not expect us to do it like we did it when, you know, back in his days because he used different methods. But get in the highways, okay? I'm going to have to get in the highway Saturday. I'm going to have to physically get in the highway. God has given you a territory to govern. I was talking to this individual, and I had made it plain to this individual several occasions over and over and over, and God will get upset if he, if he has to continue to come and tell you year after year, kept telling. And so God will get tired of telling you, then your mind will go, you'll be reprobate. We're not going to talk about that today, but we'll get into that too. Because God can continue to give us the same instructions over and over and over. And the more we continue to be disobedient, we can get into a reprobated uh, state. And he'll turn you back over to the devil, Romans chapter 1. Okay? So cut this mess out about, oh, he'll be with us until the end of the world. Yeah, as long as you stay in the will of God, he will. But you, we can get in a reprobated status. So, come on out of there. 
we can get in a reprobated status. And he'll take his hands off. Romans chapter one, read it. Where he will goes in there and he turns us back over to the devil. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of fooling with it. I don't did, I don't went as far as I can with this person. This person still when you think that you living for God and God give you an assignment or instructions or you're supposed to be saved and you're supposed to be holding up the blood stain banner, he's gonna sit there and just let you just get away scot-free or you're not doing nothing for the kingdom. The Bible said the kingdom suffered violence, and the violence must be what? Taken by force. Who takes it by force? The saints. Come on out of them. Don't make me go to say, I have not even gotten into the word of God yet. That to be taken by force. So you govern your territory. Okay? Every time he said, I just be sluggish and I have to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, give me, give me the strength to obey God. That's what he did yesterday. Came over me was a serenity hit to die by sheep. There came, it was a power came up over me yesterday. Because see, there are people, don't you know, that even though Michael had went in there and whooped Satan and kicked him out of heaven, I think that's in Revelation chapter 12 or either 14. Went in and whooped him and kicked him out. Don't you know that they are still doing battle in heaven right now for you and I? Mom, oh, that's, that's not true and stuff. Why come it's not true? The Bible says in the book of, um, I think it's in the book of either, I think it's Jude, where, where the enemy went in there and disputed against the, um, uh, the body of Moses. Yeah, they still fighting, baby. Okay, they still fight. When you get, 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 get confused in your mind and all of a sudden God come in and release it, that's an angel that went before you and then fought for the enemy to loose your mind. Yeah, they fighting, baby. They still fight. Ooh, glory to God. God, I God, thank you. They still fighting, baby, for the saints. But you got to give God something to work with. You can't just sit there and I don't want to do nothing. I don't want no. You a leader. You a pastor. You the head and not the tail. You're an apostle. You're a you prophet. You a lay member. You a bench member. You a pew member. You we all got something to do in the kingdom. I'm telling you, I was light as a feather yesterday, and so I called my little area and, and told the person who I did with, I said, I'll be over there and see y'all Saturday. And I'm bringing something with me. I always have something to bring. And the Holy Spirit had to remind me, these, this is your territory. You govern your territory. Take authority over your territory. Those people, as long as I pour into you, those people should never ever be in lack if I pour into you. And like I said, that's the reason why we have so many. That's, and two, I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't mean any harm. My job is to pray for individuals hoping that someone may be on the broadcast that have not reached that level. I pray for you. But I do not have too much time for individuals that do not help other individuals out of their ministry. Because that's the reason why a lot of times we suffer in our ministries financially simply because of the fact we're not giving out. We're not giving anything out. I thought the Bible says it's more to give than it is to receive. We're not giving out anything. People right there on your street and what have you, you ain't doing nothing to help them. People may need diapers on your street. Oh, they're going to come in and going to be begging and stuff. They're not going to do anything as long as you set it up the way God tell you to set it up and not going there in your own flesh looking for something in return. Because I don't ask those people for nothing in return. I don't ask them for nothing. I don't ask them, did you? The uh, uh, only thing I do in their laundry room, they have a laundry room, and I post in the laundry room um, about um, if they want prayer. I did that at first, but even I stopped that because they already see the God in me. I don't have to make no point, okay? I don't have to make no, I don't have to prove no point to them, okay? See how much more time we got because we we're doing live on the, on the radio broadcast as well as the video. Uh, but no, I don't have to prove a point to them. They already know. But when I first set up, that's what I did. I put my little information up there on a, on a, a colorful uh, poster 
uh, poster board and put in there, you know, my name and my email or, you know, um, they want to email me by prayer. Some people want to be anonymous. You still pray for them. That's what I do. You let them come to you and pray for you. Pray, pray for them anonymously. Some people don't want to, to put their name out there. We don't want you to treat them just like you being in the classroom going to school. I mean, tell me you can we can't for you, you can't pray for a person unless you know their name. Or unless you know what they're going through. That's not that's mm -mm. Mm -mm. we don't do that. So I just wanted to share that. We be in prayer for those those elements. Okay. Be in prayer for the war that um, that uh, God will bring a resolution to it, okay? Pray for this coronavirus. It was something that jumped out, broke out in Florida. We wanna be praying for that. Some sort of disease or something like that that broke out. It's a lot of things that go on. I'm telling you, uh, y'all, God is not happy that his wrath continues to be poured out. Is don't have nothing to do with no global warming and none of that. This is God, baby. He pouring his wrath out. And that's the reason why when he revealed that to me, I told him, I said, Lord, please don't punish the wicked with the righteous and don't punish the righteous with the wicked. Because everybody is not um, guilty. This is an opportunity when you see all of this stuff coming up, rumors of wars and stuff, we need to be repenting. Lord, what is that? what Daniel did? That's what Daniel did. Daniel didn't go in there pointing no fingers and nobody. He said, look, Lord, we done sinned. We done messed this thing up. It's in Daniel chapter 9. Go read it. Okay? Because there were, there were um, um, previous uh, uh, proclamations against um, certain locations and areas in the biblical times. And uh, when Daniel was able to read it, Daniel and other people that, you know, was appointed by God was able to read those scrolls. I think it was King Ahasuerus, Esther's uh, husband. He was another one, saw some things and stuff in there the, in, that was written in the scrolls a uh, year before down in the records. Come on here. And when people uh, get the revelation and knowledge of what's going on, they go in there and they begin to pray, but they put themselves in it too. They don't go in there and go in there pointing fingers at other folks, telling them that God is, is, is casting stuff out on other people and stuff because they evil and stuff like that. I mean, you know, you put yourself in there because, you know, we need to search ourselves, all of us. I did, I asked him, I said, Lord, please don't punish the righteous with the wicked. Okay. And we may uh, see a hundred million, and that, that, that's going to be a lot of people, y'all. If that if that if that prediction come to pass, and that's the reason why we have to be in prayer, asking God to put the brakes on that. That's a lot of folk, a hundred million people that's going to be affected by COVID by the end of 2022, and we already in the fifth month already, the month of May, I, uh, or on the uh, Jewish calendar. For the Jewish people, we in the month of IR. Come on here, because we 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 celebrate Jewish uh, feast. Our ministry does, just like, and we're being taught under this other uh, ministry, uh, which this uh, woman of God is doing a great job. It's awesome, okay? Because it says you're supposed to do it throughout your generations. That means forever. That's what it said. Then I list. I think uh, Paula White has a very powerful teaching about it. There's a lot of uh, TV evangelists. They, they they are still observing it, and I didn't understand it at first. But I'm telling you, it's an awesome experience, a very very awesome experience. I'm talking about breakthroughs coming in through those seasons, stuff coming in that you have been praying for for years. It just all of a sudden it fall off of you, and you'd be like, "Wow, really?" It's a very, very ex a, this awesome experience See, because that's what the enemy did. He came in and replaced God's uh, feast and festivals with these pagan holidays, 4th of July, you know, uh, 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 Labor Day, all kind of stuff like that. Okay. Um, I think the Muslims have a, a feast where they uh, celebrate Ramadans. Can't get the Christian folks to do nothing. 
but we got barbecues full of high blood pressure and all that kind of stuff on these pagan holidays, but we can't honor God for anything. But I'm telling you, once you get connected with that, it's an awesome experience that you'll never, you know, you'll, 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 you'll be so hungry to continue to flow in that, 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 uh, that, that type of anointing. Okay, because that's kind of start. Um, God has sent me to this church for about six weeks to train back in 2012. I'm talking about it was an experience that you never, ever, ever have experienced before. Okay, even when you celebrate, it's an experience, it's an anointing where, where you can kind of, uh, you know, I was at this, this, this church where I was being trained at and uh, as a pastor, and I'm talking about, I just literally heard the walls shaking. It was just that much power and anointing in there. And then all of a sudden, you know, later on, weeks later, and you'll see some of the things that you have been praying for, you know, Rosh Hashanah, uh, Yom Kippur, that's another one, uh, Feast Festival, uh, Feast of the Tabernacles and Booths. Of course, we celebrate uh, Lent. People don't talk about stuff like that. That's another one. That's one of God's feasts. Um, um, unleavened bread, because they ate that uh, during the Passover. So it's the, it's the Lent first. And then the Lent is, it follows up to um, Palm Sunday. And then for Palm Sunday, then it's Passover. And then, well, it's, it's, it's unleavened bread because they ate the unleavened bread just like the children of Israel did before they left out of uh, bondage. And then you have the uh, Passover, okay? And then after the Passover, then you have the Ascension. That's where we end now. And so I'm still being trained by this leader, but it's I'm not driving to um, Arkansas to get the training and what have you. Uh, they're, they're providing the training on um, uh, video. And so, um, and after that, uh, we're doing, a, we're in the fast of the 40 days now. And then after that, then we have the Pentecost that's coming up. And then it goes right back, starts back over in September again with the Raj Hashanah. And then you have your Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Booths, and then you have your Yom Kippur, okay? I'm telling you, it's an awesome experience awesome, awesome experience. And when you get in the presence of God on those holidays and those feast holidays, those Jewish holidays and things like that, I'm telling you, your life will never, ever be the same again. Things will fall off of you. Deliverance, if you put your mind where it's supposed to be and you trust God and believe it, okay? Oh, so we don't only have six minutes left. <laughs> and so we're not even, we're not, just the Holy Spirit just led me a different way this morning. And I'm thankful. Um, and uh, so we're going to take a pick up on Genesis chapter 14 next week. Um, and, um, and, and like I said, I'm thankful. And that's the reason why we always have to have our minds girded. Uh, uh, under the will of God and his plan so we can know what he wants to do, what he wants to say, and how he wants things to be able to flow and operate. Um, and so we won't be doing Genesis chapter 14 on today, but uh, we have did given you still enough uh, so you can be able um, to uh, go out and proclaim the gospel in your communities, your neighborhoods, your household, um, your churches, um, um, we're not going to say grocery stores, but we know that the Holy Spirit will show up there too. Um, so again, this is Pastor Diane Winbush of St. Petersburg Global Ministries. Um, we thank you for tuning in with us today on Tuesday. This is May the 10th. And of course, this is, we, we got an early bird this morning. Some days we, we kind of be in and out, eight o'clock, four o'clock, eight o'clock, four thirty, five thirty. So anyways, we're so thankful that you tuned in with us um, on today and being our guest this morning on Morning Manor. Again, continue to pray for one another. Pray for yourself. Don't point the finger at no one else. Examine you first. Lord, what is it? Is it me? Do I need to improve? 
you know, that's what I have thought. I got up yesterday and stuff, Lord, is it anything that I'm standing in the way of that could be delaying this situation? And that's what this, that's what this came up right here. Yeah, you're off the wheel. That's where the delay is at. You need to be out there dealing with the people that I've assigned you to. And that's what I'm saying. Work your community. Work what it is that God has given you. Don't, and a lot of time, look, he told me just as well last night and this morning, he said, people, that's the reason why I can't move people from one place to another. I can't give them the second church. I can't give them a second ministry. I cannot give them a third ministry. I cannot promote them because they have not finished the first thing first. The first assignment that I've given them, they have not even completed that. And that's the reason why I can't move them forward. And that's the reason why I say, y'all, obedience, 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 humility, 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 love, love, love. If there is any pride, ask God to do away with it. Any sternness or rashness in your spirit, ask God to help you with that. God is so humble. He'll come down to your level when you cry out to him. Okay? He'll come down to your level. A lot of times we be going through a lot of frustration. I'm telling you, it ain't, it's not God's fault. Sometimes, oh, it may be God be trying to get us stronger and stuff. Sometimes it may, may be God be trying to strengthen us. And then sometimes the stuff is just our disobedience. We're not where we're supposed to be. Okay? And after that frustration kept going, going, going. And then after the frustration, and then the Holy Spirit came in there. I said, what am I doing wrong? He said, get over there where your people at. You have an assigned apartment complex that I've assigned you to. Get back over there where they're at. They need me through you. And when I got over there and done it, all of a sudden, my spirit was free as a lark. I was back on the wheel. It don't take that much, y'all, to get off. I don't care how long you've been saved. Get, get somewhere and sit down. Don't come telling me none of that. It's easy to get off. That's the reason why you have to stay under a effective prayer. Okay? So again, this is uh, Pastor Diane Winbush, St. Petersburg Global Ministries. We will see you next week, Tuesday, at the same uh, time. Okay? And everyone have a wonderful day.